Honestly, if you just focus on these 13 topics, you'd be prepared to face most data science problems. Hey guys, I'm Avery and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things data science and analytics. In today's video, I wanna talk about what it takes to become a data scientist in 2022. There's been some similar videos done in the past, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to provide a unique perspective to what's been said previously already. If you're new to my channel, I just want to say hello and thank you so much for tuning in. If you find this video useful at all, it would mean a lot to me if you hit the subscribe button as many times as you can. Just kidding, please only press it once, all right? Only once. But before we get into it, let's get started with a simple definition of what a data scientist actually is, as there's actually a lot of different perspectives. In this video, I'll be considering a data scientist to be someone who analyzes data with the use of advanced statistics and machine learning. This definition is juxtaposed, 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 is next to the term data science, which simply means providing value with data. You don't have to be a data scientist to do data science. So let's put that aside for the moment just for a second and focus on what it takes to become a data scientist. In the past, you've needed to have a PhD or a master's to become a data scientist, but uh, that's changing really quickly. There are so many people transitioning without any formal training, so many people taking boot camps and so many people self-studying, and heck, now there's even data science undergraduate degrees, so the field is changing really rapidly. Rapidly. Moral of the story is the field is changing and it will be for the next couple years. As of right now, I see four main ways to break into data. The first one is to get a graduate degree, which is either a PhD or a master's. The second one is to get an undergraduate degree. The third one is to self-study and the fourth one is a bootcamp slash a course. I'm going to assume many of you don't want to get a PhD and many of you probably already have a college undergrad degree. And I personally don't have a PhD and my undergraduate is actually in chemical engineering. So I won't be focusing on those very much at all and instead I'll be focusing on the others. Some of you might be interested in a master's and I'll cover my experience with the master's in the next YouTube video. So hit that subscribe button and bell right now to be notified when it comes out. I'll cover my experience in getting a master's in analytics from Georgia Tech and how that experience was for me. But in this video, I'm guessing that you're more interested in the self-study and the boot camps or like a program that I run called Data Career Jumpstart. But a good piece of advice that my friend Sundas Khalid mentioned earlier in her video released this year about how she would relearn data science in the year of 2020 is to make sure you understand the possible career paths. That is so important. Data science has many different fields and actually many different sub roles. So it's important to chase those out and understand what you can even do inside of the world of data science, inside of the dataverse. But the advice I'll give you today will work for any general data science position. So let's get into that advice. Let's talk requirements. At the end of the day, the requirements for becoming a data scientist are actually pretty similar. Having a good knowledge of statistics, SQL, a programming language, either Python or R, and being able to create a machine learning model. Those four things, SQL, Python slash R, and machine learning, bam, that's it. The four ingredients to becoming a data scientist in 2022. Stats, SQL, Python, R, machine learning, memorize it, get it in that brain. And the truth you may or may not want to hear is, it doesn't matter how you learn those things. It's just a matter of learning them. That's it, that really is it, I promise you. Okay, except for one big thing. And that is you have to be able to prove it. You can't just tell an employer, hey, I watched Avery Smith's video and he said stats, SQL, Python slash R and machine learning. So I studied those and I'm ready for my job. No, it does not work like that. You gotta back it up. Not like back it up dancing, but you have to show proof. How can you back up your knowledge? One way is employers will have take home assignments or coding tests where you can demonstrate your knowledge. The other way is you need to have a portfolio to show off your work. And to be honest, likely you'll need both of them to combine together. Different industries and different companies will emphasize the interview or the portfolio more than the other. I personally think the portfolio is more generally useful and does a better job of highlighting your capabilities, but that's just me. It doesn't really matter what I think unless I'm trying to hire you. The other thing to keep in mind is, is where do I find a job? Because even if you have those skills and even if you can prove it, you still need to have someone listen to you and give you a chance. And that's where some data science learning platforms will fall short compared to others or excel better than others. For instance, I'm an individual, I'm a human and I have human connections. And I've developed a lot of data connections over the last few years. So I try to help my students get in touch with people who can actually help them find really good jobs. In fact, two of my students just landed jobs in the past month that came through some of my personal connections. Networking is always king, and it's always best to try to get a referral or at least some sort of human connection when applying to, for jobs. Of course, you can just apply to jobs online kind of blindly, and that works sometimes, to be honest. 
or you can create interesting projects and share them on places like Kaggle and LinkedIn and hope it gets noticed. But nothing can really compete with human connections. So in deciding where and how to learn to become a data scientist, think I need to learn stats, I need to learn SQL, I need to learn Python slash R and machine learning. And I need to be able to back it up via coding interviews and portfolios. And I need a connection for the job. That is the magic recipe for 2022. To dive a little bit deeper into what you actually need to learn within stats, SQL, Python slash R and machine learning, I'll list a few topics within each category to help you out. First, stats. I think you need to learn descriptive statistics, which is basically, can you describe a data set using statistics, min, max, distributions, those types of things. Two, hypothesis testing. Can you statistically prove something to be true or false based on a hypothesis? Three, ANOVA, analysis of variance. Being able to tell if something is statistically different than something else. All right, moving on to SQL. You need to know select star from blank where. That's the whole blueprint of everything in SQL. You need to know aggregator functions, max, count, etc., etc. And then you need to know case when, which is the more complicated queries. For Python, this is what I suggest learning, is pandas to learn how to manipulate and store data, Seaborn to make beautiful beautiful data visualizations, and scikit-learn to train machine learning models inside of Python. And lastly, what machine learning algorithms should we learn? Multivariate linear regression is number one, because it's really simple and is easy to predict things. Two is k-nearest neighbors to classify things. Three is k-means clustering to do unsupervised clustering. And four is decision slash regression trees, just to give you another algorithm that will do classification and quantification with the same algorithm pretty much. So two for one. Honestly, if you just focus on these 13 topics, you'd be prepared to face most data science problems that you'll face as a data scientist. Of course, it doesn't cover everything, but it would be an amazing start. And honestly, do not learn more than these 13 things before applying to a job. The best way to learn is on the job training anyways, and then you're getting paid to learn instead of paying to learn. And that's why I start with those 13 topics at Data Career Jumpstart, which in my opinion is the ultimate way to learn data science, but I'm obviously really biased. But truly, I designed DCJ in a way that I thought made most sense to learn data science. Now you might be asking, well, how is 2022 different than years previous? And I think one, smaller companies will dip their toes into analysis and automation, meaning a lot more smaller roles at smaller companies will open up. And personally, I like smaller companies, so I look forward to this trend. I also think proving your worth is more important than ever. And employers and recruiters will really be attached to people who have portfolios. We live in an age where you can reach thousands of people with just one post. It's never been easier to show how cool you are to thousands of people. And trust me, I think you're cool, okay? You are cool. Imagine working 50 years ago. How can you show someone your work? You either need to meet them in person or send them a postcard. And I'm not about to go buy some stamps, so use the internet to show off your skills. And I also think analytics tools are actually getting smarter. No code machine learning platforms are getting better and better each day. So your technical and coding skills are actually maybe becoming less important. While things like finding business value, communication, and working with shareholders is actually becoming more important. This is actually something that many boot camps and masters fail to cover adequately. They give you the tech skills, but they leave you high and dry with no human slash communication skills. And that's another element that I try to emphasize inside of Data Career Jumpstart. In your view, you need stats, SQL, Python slash R, and machine learning skills to become a data scientist. And then it's a matter of getting an opportunity and networking referrals are best for that. And then to prove it by passing coding tests or having an amazing portfolio. And that's it folks, tech skills, proof, job opportunity. It's all you need. Hey, if you got any value out of this video and want to see any of my future videos, please go ahead and subscribe. I'll give you one truth buck if you do. And if you didn't like this video, just hit the subscribe button anyways for my self-esteem. Just kidding, kind of just kidding. I don't know if I'm kidding or not. If you'd like to hear how I became a data scientist, I'm gonna pop that video up on the screen right there. That kind of goes through my data story. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate all of you guys. I'll see you in future videos. And as always, stay data-driven.